Hey everybody, this is Tanner Knight. Welcome back to another episode of Tanner's Favorite Things. I know we talk a lot about guitars and music and drums and a lot of the things that I like revolving around music, but today we're going to take a little bit different approach and talk about one of my very favorite pieces of media, and this is Frisky Dingo. Now, if you're not familiar with Frisky Dingo, this is an adult swim cartoon from around 2006, 2007. It only lasted two seasons, but boy are they a whopper of two seasons. Now, Frisky Dingo is an animated series, and the episodes are only about 11 minutes long, so they just, they just flow like water. You can sit down to watch an episode of Frisky Dingo and end up watching both seasons very easily without blinking an eye. Now, what I love most about Frisky Dingo is the character development. This isn't so much a show about things and interactions that you might encounter on any other show. Rather, Frisky Dingo takes the approach of having these outlandish characters with really wild personas and puts them in, in very strange scenarios, and you get to see how those interactions unfold. Now, you may be familiar with the show Archer, which is created by the same creator, Frisky Dingo, Adam Reed and Matt Thompson. And uh, I love Archer as well, but you'll see a lot of nuggets that are mined in Frisky Dingo show up in Archer later on. So that's another little Easter egg that you'll enjoy down the road. But what makes Frisky Dingo great? To me, it's the dialogue. The writers really focus on what's the absolute funniest thing in any given scenario. We have lots of recurring jokes, like jokes that show up throughout the series. Well, that's a pickle. Ooh! What? I was supposed to get pickles <sighs> for a party. You want to come? There's going to be pickles if I get them. <gasps> as well as jokes that are purposely written to be duds. You may say, well, that doesn't sound very funny, but I promise you the way that they use dud jokes is really excellent. Oh, 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 you are lucky I'm blind. Yeah, so is your mirror. My, that doesn't even make sense. Yeah. So it's really hard to outline a specific plot for Frisky Dingo. It's not really about the plot, but our main characters are Killface. Greetings, America. I am Killface. Who is, we can assume, an alien. Uh, they don't really explain much beyond that, but Killface, who is a villainous alien who has come to planet Earth and uh, is bent on world domination and, in fact, the complete destruction of the Earth. So that's pretty much the setup of the series. We launch right into who is Killface and uh, what is his plot his whole idea is to destroy the Earth using his Annihilatrix, which he has developed. There's your 20 billion, Brent! Drink it in! The fusion chamber alone costs 9 billion. The, the, the thrust is another four! So we have Killface, who is the antagonist, and our protagonist is Xander Cruz. And I say in quotes because he's not exactly what you'd call a protagonist. Xander Cruz is a tycoon billionaire who is completely 100% selfish and lives for nothing else just to serve his own desires. Yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, baby. Oh, this is oh, so God. wrong. Oh, oh, my God. I'm with a prostitute. Yeah, come on, you big black son of a bitch. What? Oh, yeah. Where did that come from? What? I know. Don't, don't stop. I like it. Okay. Come on. Oh, baby. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, don't stop. Shut up, hooker. Xander. Baby, you up here? You have got to move that crazy suit of armor before it kills somebody or... <gasps> Xander Cruz is dating Grace Ryan, the newscaster from Force 10 News, and he basically treats her like garbage. For You're welcome, city. For Force 10 News, I'm... Thank you. I'm... Thank you, city. You're awesome. For Force 10 News, I'm Grace Ryan. And I am Awesome X! may say, well, that doesn't sound very woke, but in all honesty, Grace Ryan as the character does suck pretty bad, and you really want to see her not succeed. And I believe that's by design. So Killface and Xander Cruz get entangled in a superhero, supervillain type scenario, but you don't see any of the standard face-offs or big battles between these two characters. The real meat of the series is in how these characters interact with one another, and the timing of the dialogue and how they deliver the dialogue. Another major character is kind of a collection of characters known as the Exticles. Guys, um, I'm flummoxed. Well, I'm not. Let's blast his face off. But how do you know about the paternity suit if he's not Awesome X? Yeah, that was top secret stuff. And Kevin is not the father. Woo! Hey, 
thank you, Mr. Wake Up the Baby. <laughs> Not my baby. Way to go, Kevin. This is the fighting force behind Xander Cruz. These are actual humans in robotic looking armor. So they kind of all look the same and sound the same. And there's no real differentiation. They do each get individual names here and there, but they're kind of thought of as a collective, a single character with a single voice. Next, we have Stan, who is kind of the straight man to Xander Cruz. He's the one trying to keep the Cruz family business on the rails. Well, he's actually kind of a villain himself, and, and we see that unfold throughout the series. Yeah, who started a rumor Awesome X is retiring? I may have. Stan? Uh, on behalf of Awesome X, issued a press release. Yes. But what the hell did you do that for? Because now that Awesome X has defeated all the supervillains in the city, it's time Xander Cruz got focused Blame. on running his huge multinational conglomerate. But Stan is more like a straight man to Xander Cruz's comic lead. But really, some of my favorite characters in Frisky Dingo are the small characters. For instance, Mr. Ford is a character who shows up kind of towards the end of the first season and becomes more prominent through season two. Damn, man. What the hell you doing? You're not telling me you're not going to buy food. Come on now, how you going to feed these damn bunnies? What the hell are you wearing? Are you on your way to the moon? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk like you in a wreck. Look at me, I'm tired of talking to you. Get the f out of my store. Go on to the moon with your sharp ass. Mr. Ford is just this complete off-the-wall character that mumbles through most of his dialogue, says very ridiculous things, but always has the right thing to say at the right time. There's also the character Taquil, who's a rapper, but he shows up to provide a lot of commentary, uh, sometimes racial, sometimes not, sometimes just rapper commentary, but either way, he's got some really great one-liners. I'm really kind of scared. Ow! We'll see how scared your punk ass is when you're doing 10 the hard way in the federal pen. What the? And see. How was that? Goosebumps. God almighty. Taquil's doing research for a movie about the FBI. Wait. Are y'all allowed to hit him? No. No, we're actually, uh, the Department of Labor, so we're not authorized to do, you know, any of this. Right on. Ow! <laughs> yeah. Come on! <laughs> There's a collection of nerds who show up and actually interact with Xander Cruz in a number of different scenarios. And uh, there's some really great recurring jokes that revolve around their character's existence. So, how come you're wearing a wig? Well, I wanted to join your merry band, so I thought I'd dress up like an elf warrior. <laughs> What's your problem, Cookie Jarvis? <laughs> an elf with robotic leggings. <laughs> Genre mixing alert. <laughs> 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 Guys, come on. That's baffling. <laughs> sorry. Baffling. Guys, I'm sorry. And they're just three kind of Dungeons and Dragons nerds who happen to be in the right place at the right time to interact with these characters. Another one of my favorite characters who really doesn't say much but ends up having a really important role in the series is Simon, Killface's son. Xander Cruz isn't going to kidnap himself. Inside Phil's tummy. Shut up, Phil. Yeah. And what do you think you're doing? Oh, really? Well, bright young lads who bring home a C in Earth Science and a C minus in Algebra don't get to go on a lovely kidnapping. Yes, as a matter of fact, we'll probably use Algebra like mad today. Now, Simon is a bit of a weenie. He uh, is a little doughy, pretty insecure is mostly interested in causing trouble rather than contributing positively, but uh, he's also a very mumbly character and his dialogue is unintelligible through pretty much the entire series. There's also Sin and Val who are two of the more prominent female characters. Sin ends up as an indentured slave to Killface, but she uh, ends up with her own freedom and ends up joining the Exicles of all, all things. Uh, so that's a really interesting character arc. And uh, Val who is another slave. She's been kidnapped by Killface and uh, forced to work marketing for, for his efforts. And uh, both Sin and Val end up having really hilarious character arcs as well. Your plans to destroy the world. <laughs> when did you get so emotionally needy? Uh, also, there's a decent chance that me and her are gonna be gay for each other. Well, yeah, also that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. This is actually kind of a lot for me to process. The hoy. All at once? Well, process it while you kill Antagony. What? Snap. 
there really are a ton of characters in Frisky Dingo, but one last one that I want to mention, of course, is Wendell Stamps, who ends up being a low-level government employee who infiltrates the core group of Frisky Dingo and really becomes a core member of the, of the team in Season 2. Wendell is your non-lovable fat-ass character. Wendell is underhanded and litigious and pretty darn evil in a lot of instances, but uh, he's very lovable and uh, I think that you'll really enjoy his character as well. Anywho, I do, uh, what do I do? Perimeter security is big. Bad guy comes in, snap, crackle, pop. That wakes me up. I hit this bad boy. Is this all of them? Wendell? That's what I thought. Wendell is one of those characters that can equally interact with Killface and then with Xander Cruz and he ends up switching allegiances throughout the series and it's really entertaining. The most important thing to know about Frisky Dingo is that it will defy your expectations. Any direction you're expecting the series to go, it will take another one. But thanks to you and your mysterious brain chemical, we shall savor the sweet nectar of revenge as we rise up as one man and destroy my brother, Xander Cruz. <laughs> thanks, Ken. Ronnie. What? What? What is wrong with you? Hey, what? I do you That's favor. why we can't have nice things. Hey, come on, Thank guys. you, Ronnie. It's complicated enough without all this evil twin bullshit having. It will go in the opposite direction, and it will go there fast, and it will sometimes abandon that whole notion and go a different direction altogether again. These sudden shifts in direction can be a little jarring for people who really like predictable television. So if you like laugh tracks and predictable humor, and predictable scenarios, then Frisky Dingo's not for you. However, if you want something that thinks outside the box, humor that's fast-paced and that you really have to pay attention for, then Frisky Dingo checks all those boxes. I find that there's a lot of crossover between Frisky Dingo and Archer, so if you like Archer and like that style of humor, Frisky Dingo will probably be right up your alley. The best part, some might say the worst part, is that it is only two seasons, and at 11 minute and 11 minute and a half episodes, you can really just crank through it like water, like I said, and really do it in an afternoon if you really want to, or you can spread it out as you'd like. So, Frisky Dingo, one of Tanner's absolute favorite things. I highly suggest you check it out. Hopefully this review gave you enough impetus to go and uh, check it out. I believe it's on Hulu right now. You can always purchase it on Amazon. In fact, that's the way I have it. I purchased it through Amazon Prime and now it's linked to all of my accounts. But either way, if you can get your hands on Frisky Dingo, I highly recommend it. This has been Tanner Knight, and this has been one of Tanner's favorite things. Thank you and hope to see you on the next one.